your world is a lamp for my feet and a light for my path. The message you are about to hear is brought to you by African Mission Tape Ministry of the Redeemed Christian Church of God, Redemption Camp. God bless you as you listen in Jesus' name. I'm sure you will receive our praises standing. But you see, when you think of the fact that you are still alive in the fifth month of this year, the fact that you can still speak, the fact that your hands can still move, the fact that you are not in prison, the fact that you are not in detention, the fact that you are not in hospital, I, I think we should just praise him. Why don't you just go ahead and praise the Almighty God? Why don't you just magnify his holy name? You can stand, you can praise him while standing. But I think that we should really just magnify his holy name and just tell him how good he is, how wonderful, how powerful, how glorious, how mighty he is. Oh yes, let's just, let's just sing unto him. Ba, 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 ba. Eshe o baba, Eshe o baba, Awadu kwe baba, 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 Eshe o baba, Eshe o baba, Awadu kwe baba. Ba 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 you are worthy, Lord. El Shaddai. Hallelujah. You are worthy, Lord. You are worthy, Lord. You are worthy, Lord. King of glory. So 
Worship him, just magnify the Holy One of Israel. The I am that I am, the unchangeable Lord. Oh yes, magnify his holy name. He's worthy, he's worthy, he's worthy to be praised. Oh yes, he's the King of Kings, he's the Lord of Lords. He's the I am that I am, he's the Ancient of Days. He's the Rock of Ages. He's a soon coming king. He's a great provider. He's a great physician. He has never lost a battle. Oh yes, he's always the same. He's, un he's unchangeable. His love is forever sure. His mercy is far, far beyond the heavens. From everlasting to everlasting, he is God. Before the mountains were brought forth, he is God. When there is no more air, he will be God. Oh yes, he's the lover of our souls. He's a miracle walking God. He's a man of war. He reigns forever. When he speaks, it is done. There is no one like him. Oh yes, the East El Shaddai, blessed, blessed, blessed be your name forever, O oh Lord. Thank you, Father. Glory be to your name, Lord. Thank you, Lord. Glory be to your name, Lord. Father, we, we just want to bless your name. You're just too wonderful for words. There's no one like you. You are the oldest of all the oldest. You are the strongest of all the strongest. You are the mightiest of all the mightiest. You are forever there. From everlasting to everlasting, you are God. When heaven and earth are passed away, you will still be God. Glory be to your holy name, Lord. Thank you because you are good. Thank you because you are kind. Thank you because you are wonderful. Thank you because you are faithful. Thank you because you are dependable. Thank you because you are a good friend. Thank you because you are there anytime we need you. Glory be to your holy name, Lord. Today, Father, surprise us. Like no one else can, please surprise us. Let every one of us have testimonies today. And at the end of everything, let your name be glorified again. Thank you, Father. Glory be to your name. In Jesus' name we have prayed. Amen. Well, let somebody shout hallelujah. If your joy is going to be full, give God a heart. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Thank you, Jesus. God bless you. You may be seated. The Lord has sent me to just one person here today. If you are the one, say amen. amen. <laughs> Judges chapter 16. Judges 16, verse 16 to 22. I want to rejoice with those who are standing because blessings always come from above and it will reach those of us who are standing before reaching those who are sitting. So if you are standing, shout hallelujah. <laughs> I'm sure some people who are sitting now wish they were standing. Judges chapter 16. From verse 16 to 22. And it came to pass when she pestered him daily with her words and praised him so that his soul was vexed to death. 
that he told her all his heart and said to her, No razor had ever come upon my head, for I have been a Nazarite to God from my mother's womb. If I'm shaven, then my strength will leave me and I shall become weak and be like any other man. When Delilah saw that he had told her all his heart, she sent and called for the laws of the Philistines, saying, Come up once more, for he has told me all his heart. So the laws of the Philistines came up to her and brought the money in their hand. Then she lured him to sleep on her knees and called for a man and had him shave off the seven locks of his head. Then she began to torment him and his strength left him. And she said, the Philistines are upon you, Samson. So he awoke from his sleep and said, I will go out as before at other times and shake myself free. But he did not know that the Lord had departed from him. Then the Philistines took him and put out his eyes and brought him down to Gaza. They bound him with bronze fetters and he became a grinder in the prison. However, let somebody say however. Mm -hmm. However, the hair of his head began to grow again after it had been shaven. The Lord is sending me to one person here today, and the message is loud and clear. The message is, the sun shall rise again. Something was a powerful man. I mean, this man was highly anointed. He was not ordinarily anointed. He was anointed from the womb. Before he was born, he was baptized in the Holy Spirit. He was a special man. In fact, he was so special that God did for him what is never done for others. I mean, the Bible says, God has spoken once. Twice have I heard this, the power belongs to God. God normally will speak just once. If you hear it the second time, it is the echo. But in the case of Samson, God sent a messenger right from heaven to the mother. And said, so you are going to have a son, and that son is going to be very special. And the angel left. And the mother ran to the husband and said, Oh, I had a visit from heaven. This is what they told me. Oh, the husband said, Why didn't you call me? Why the angel was here? Oh God, if this thing is true, send the angel again. And God sent the angel a second time. I mean, something was special. And when he was born, Oh, it was a powerhouse. He was mighty. I mean, he could do practically anything that you wouldn't even dream humanly possible. He wasn't like David, you know, punching a lion to death. In the case of Samson, when the lion roared at him, he just took it and tore it into two. That man was powerful. There was a time when we just had a little bit of swinging right and left and with the jawbone of an ass and a thousand people were dead. He would have killed more, but the others fled. There was a time when the city thought they've got him and they, 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 they sealed him in with one mighty giant gate and he just got up uprooted the gate and he carried it up to the top of a hill and said, before you get your gate back, you will sweat. That was something. I mean, he was a bulldozer kind of man. He was a go-getter. He was powerful. But he had only one little problem. Just one little problem. Oh, I'm sure if I ask you now, you will say, oh, it is, it's love for strange women. No, 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 that's not the problem. 
that one was just the that wasn't the root that was just merely the flowers of his problem his problem simply was that he wanted to behave like a car without a brake he hated the restraints imposed on him by tradition by the establishment he, he doesn't like to be hindered in any way he wanted to move on so whenever he said i found a girl here which i like and the parents said, ah, but that's 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 forbidden um, you know in Israel, we don't read that way. He said, what are you talking about? I'm the big one in Israel. Oh, the parents said, but Israel produced you. He uh, said, so, well, maybe, maybe they did, but now I'm the judge in Israel, so I, I, I must do my thing. You know, don't, don't mess me up, man. Let me, let me get, keep going. You know, that's, that's the only problem. And he broke all the rules. All the rules of being a Nazarite. Everything God said you should not do because you're a Nazarite, he did. Being a Nazarite, you are not supposed to touch a dead body. Oh, who is talking? He just went and took honey from the carcass of a lion and ate it. Nothing happened. The power kept on increasing. You mustn't drink wine. He drank wine. And uh, when the, something happened after that, he just killed some 2,000 Philistines just to show that the power is still there. Wine or no wine. Oh, I said, Nazareth, you must be holy. You must be pure. Oh, who is talking? I mean, he went into the house of a harlot. Spent a night there, and uh, when the people said that, uh, oh, we've already got it, he waited till midnight and came out. And, you know, the anointing was still flowing. He, even after that one, he was still able to uproot the gates of a city. He was breaking all the rules, right, left, and center, and God was silent. God was dangerously silent. I don't know who I'm talking to, but God is talking to someone. God can be very silent. When you expect him to speak, he may just keep quiet. You see, God is not a talkative. That's why if you get a prophet who is always prophesying every, every hour, ask him who is talking to him. It's not likely to be my daddy. When you find a prophet who is... Uh, uh, it's a basket mouth kind of prophet always talking mm, you can be sure who his God is it's not my dad my dad is not a talkative he speaks and he's done period let there be light and there be light and then he keeps quiet God was silent any a time many a times when we think we are clever when we think we can maneuver God, when we think we can do our own show and nothing will follow, God keeps silent. And you know why he's so silent? Uh, because it's not only Alpha, it's Omega. He knows that it doesn't matter how far you run, you meet him there. You can travel as far as you can go. At the end of the road, he will be waiting. Again and again, they spoke to, to try to correct something. Something, take it easy. This is the way it is done. This is the way God said. Is this God who promised you, who gave you the power, who gave you the anointing, who gave you every success that you have, is the one who said, this is the way it should be done. He said, who is talking? I'm the one in charge. So after some time, God said, um, maybe we better let this boy go. If he's become too big for us, maybe we should let him go. So he married Delilah. 
I mean, to see how far Samson had gone, Delilah wasn't sophisticated. When she was talking to Samson, there was no diplomacy in anything she said. What is the secret of your power? Tell me, what can we do to you so we can bind you and torment you? I mean, nothing can be cruder than that. I would have thought, I mean, thank God I will never be Delilah. I'm a man. But if I were Delilah, I would have said, my darling, you are a mighty strong man. Could you just tell me the secret of your power so that I know areas of my prayers? You know, so I know where to cover for you so that, you know, the enemy will not be able to punish. That's what I would have said. No, 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 Delilah said it plainly. Tell me, how can we bind you? What can we do to you so you become like any other man? But Samson was so confident. I mean, he had killed thousands with the job. Of, oh, who is this little girl? Who is this little, this little flip of a girl? I mean... You want to know the secret of my power? Oh, yeah, let's play a game. And they played the game, and the lady won. <laughs> I'm sure many of us have uh, wondered why Elijah ran. The man who stood and called fire down from heaven and dealt with all the prophets of Bear. When a woman said, I will get you, what did he do? Very wise man. Very wise man. I won't say more than that. <laughs> anyway, so finally, Samson poured out his heart, revealed his secret to the wrong fellow, and then the enemy came. And not only did they bind him, they, they plucked out his eyes, they removed his vision. He couldn't see clearly anymore. In fact, he couldn't see at all anymore. But then you see, our God is a merciful God. Oh, is he, is the Holy One of Israel? No doubt about that. He does not tolerate sin. No doubt about that. Is he consuming? For, oh, yes. But his mercy endure forever. And so, that link between him and God, the hair on his head, began to grow again. I am confident that for someone here today, your sun shall rise again. Yeah. The story of Samson can be the story of an individual. Whatever the name of that individual, whether male or female, the story of Samson can be your story. It could also be the story of a family. It could be the story of a group of people. It could be the story of a whole nation. Let's take the, the case of an individual. We can clearly say with confidence in the Almighty God that the sick shall be whole again. Can you say amen to that? Yeah. Why? Because the Bible tells us in 1 Peter chapter 2, verse 24, 1 Peter 2, 24, it said, by, by his stripes we were healed. I think I've shared with some of us before that I, ha I, I had from reliable sources that all the sicknesses and diseases in the world could be classified into 39 categories. I'm not a medical doctor, so if that's not true, then whoever told me lied. But I don't believe he lied. And when they were beating the Lord Jesus Christ, they gave him 40 lashes. So he had a strive for every category of disease and he had an extra one standing by. 
just in case they discover some diseases that they have not discovered before and they want to classify that one in category 40. It doesn't matter the nature of your sickness or your disease. My God, we heal you today in Jesus' name. I believe that your son, health-wise, shall rise again in Jesus' name. I also believe that the captive can be free again. That once upon a time, there was someone who was free, but then the fellow got captured. I believe that that fellow can be free again. Because the Bible says in Isaiah 49, from verse 24 to 26, Isaiah 49, from verse 24 to 26, it says, and I'm summarizing, it says, even the captives of the mighty shall be made free. And if the captor now says he's going to resist, God said, I will feed the captor with his own flesh and make that captor drink his own blood. And at the end of it, you will still go free. Do I hear you say amen to that? And I believe that the sad can be joyous again. I believe that somebody who used to be happy, but now is sad. And he's here this morning. I'm trusting God that before you leave here, you'll be jumping for joy once more. Because when you read 2 Kings chapter 4, and you read from verse 18 to 38, 2 Kings 4 verse 18 to 38, you find the story of a woman who was barren for a long time, and then God gave her a son. And when the son grew up, the son died. So the one who used to have joy suddenly found herself in the death of sorrow. But she held on to the God of Elisha. My God, your God. And at the end of the day, she was rejoicing again. I dare believe that there will be somebody today who will go home dancing, praising God, rejoicing like never before in Jesus' name. And I believe that the failure can be a success again. When you read Luke chapter 5, and you read from just verse 1 to 7 there, Luke 5 from verse 1 to 7, you find the story of a man who failed and failed completely. And you can relate to that story in any angle. This is a man who fished all night and caught nothing. It could be, this is a man who studied all night long and failed his examination. It could be the story of a woman who was busy with her husband all night and yet ended up barren. It could be the story of a man who was busy on his business even while others were sleeping and still ended up bankrupt. But the Almighty God stepped in and just in one move of the Almighty God, the failure became an outstanding success. So shall it be for someone here today in Jesus' name. So the story of Samson can be the story of a person, of an individual, any individual. But that story can also be the story of a family. A family that has a crisis right now, in the mighty name of Jesus, that crisis shall be resolved. Because when you read John chapter 2 from verse 1 to 11, John 2 verse 1 to 11, you find the story of the, of the marriage in Canaan of Galilee. I mean, if you are talking of a crisis in a family, that family had a crisis. They had a crisis that started the very day of the wedding. But the Almighty God stepped in and he resolved you. I know there might be one or two people here who had no problems at all until they got married. And then their problems started. Well, the sun shall rise again. Amen. There will be a change today in Jesus' name. Amen. Or it could be a family that is destitute. A family where the father doesn't know what to do next. The mother doesn't even know what to do. There is no food in the house. They don't even know where the money will come to pay the house rent. I mean, and on and on and on. 
But then, so a family had been destitute before, and God turned the tide. When you read Second Kings chapter four, verse one to seven, Second Kings four verse one to seven, you will find there that there was a woman, a widow, who was so poor and so heavily in debt that the creditors wanted to sell her sons. No, no, I know it is possible that there might be someone here today that the bank is already threatening to sell your property or sell your house or something. At least they are not threatening to sell your children. Well, and I have good news for you. If you are in that situation, that bank that is threatening to sell your property will soon be owing you. Yeah. Now, I didn't hear him into that one. This family was destitute until God stepped in and all of a sudden, the destitute family became rich again. Their son rose once more. And when you read John chapter 11, verse 21 to 25, John 11, verse 21 to 25, you find that there was a family that would really, really fix to this story. Because the son in that family actually said, and the son remained said for four long days. That's the story of Lazarus. But when the Almighty God got there, their son rose again. Oh, there might be families that have already lost hope. Probably the, the, the best hope of the family uh, has become something else. And they had looked around and they felt that, no, 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 there's no more hope. Glory be to God. And that's right. That's, that's the power of God just moving. There's nothing wrong with it. You may help him by moving that hand up from under him anyway. Thank you, Jesus. Thank you, Lord. I am assuring you that today, even when the people had already lost hope that the sun can never rise again, my father will bring the sun up once more. The story of Samson can be the story of a group. A group of people. Oh, if you want a very good example, take the apostles. They were the special boys of the Lord Jesus Christ. I mean, <laughs> everywhere Jesus went, they went with him. I mean, the Almighty God came here on earth in human flesh, and these 12 people were you know, the special boys. If you want to see Jesus, you have to go through them. That will tell you how powerful they were. I mean, if you read John chapter 12, verse 20 to 22. John 12, 20 to 22. Some people came, they wanted to see Jesus. They had to go through their post. Sir, we want to see Jesus. They said, uh, you wait here, we'll see, we'll see whether we'll let you see him or not. And so whenever, wherever they went, they went with their head, head high, you know. We were, the, we were the close associates of the Lord Jesus. But then, their son said, and by the time you read John chapter 20, verse 19 to 23, John 20, 19 to 23, the Bible tells us that the next time Jesus Christ visited them, they were hiding in a room all the doors and windows locked for the fear of the Jews. I mean, the people who used to show themselves off and say, yeah, we are the, we are the ones, you know. Uh, without us, you can't see Jesus. They were now hiding. Because their son said, but thank God, the son rose again. And by the time we finish the story with this same group of people, by the time you read Acts chapter 5, from verse 12 to 13, Acts 5, 12 to 13, the Bible tells us that the people highly magnified them when they saw the miracles, the signs, the wonders that God Almighty was performing through them. I believe very, very strongly that very, very soon, when people hear that you are a member of the Redeemed Christian Church of God, and that you in particular come from a papa family, they will say, here goes an anointed man of God. 
Here goes a, an anointed woman of God. So shall it be in Jesus' name. The story of Samson can be the story of a nation. I mean, if you consider Israel, for example, when you read Numbers 22, verse 1 to 4, Numbers 22, verse 1 to 4, the Bible tells us that a king was shaking when he just took a look around and he saw the children of Israel. He was shaking. He had to call a council of his people and said, listen, these people will just lick us up. They will, they will take us over. And he had to go ahead and send for somebody who was a false prophet and said, please come and curse them. Maybe if you use some enchantments against them, I might be able to overcome them. And at that time, the Bible said, there is no enchantment against Israel. Israel was a terror. There was a time when everybody wanted to become a Nigerian. I remember those days very well. I had some Indian friends who were struggling very hard to become Nigerian. I not to talk about Ghanaians and other people. I mean, when they say, who are you? You want to say, I am a Nigerian. I believe the sun will rise again. But then for Israel, the sun set. And by the time you were reading Psalm 137, verse 1 to 4, Psalm 137, verse 1 to 4, they, 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 they were telling you about how they hung their instruments of music by the river Babylon, how they were weeping, because those who captured them asked them to sing a song in captivity. And how, how can we sing the lost song in a strange land? The terror of nations. Because the Bible said they are, the, the fear of them went ahead. When nations heard that they were coming, they shook. But now, the sun set. And now the captor said, sing, slaves. <laughs> and I can tell you that I've experienced that one before. There was a time when if you're a Nigerian and you are going to America, you are more than welcome. Because the Naira at that time was almost double the dollar. Then things changed. And I got to the airport there. And I told them that I'm a, I'm a pastor. They said, ah, is that so? I said, yes. Uh -huh. When was the last time you preached? I said, last Sunday. And uh, what did you preach on? I said, five reasons why we should praise God. And what text did you use? I said, First Peter chapter 2, verse 9. He said, now we want to hear this sermon. Now, I've always regretted that they didn't give me a microphone. And just when I got to the stage where I would make an altar call, they asked me to stop the sermon. But in spite of all that, they still took me to a room to search me. I'm a Nigerian and a pastor. That seemed to be a dangerous combination. <laughs> so then we now had to sing the Lord's song in a strange land. Where the tide will turn. Yeah. You see, because the Bible says in Psalm 126, verse 1 to 3, Psalm 126, verse 1 to 3, 1 to 3 it said, when the Lord turned the captivity of Israel, we were like them that dream. I believe that the son of Nigeria shall rise again. Amen. Now, after the sun has risen, because there's no doubt about it that God is talking to someone today, and that sun is going to rise. And I am sure it is because of that fellow that there is no tent, so that the fellow can see the sun straight away. After the sun is risen, whether it is the sun of your health or the sun of your prosperity or the sun of your freedom or the sun of your joy, the sun needs not set ever again. 
Because the one who is sick, who will be healed this morning, does not need to be ever sick again. Exodus 15 verse 26. Exodus 15 verse 26 says, If you will hearken diligently to the voice of the Lord thy God, to observe and to do all the things that I command you this day, I will bring none of the diseases that I put on the Egyptian upon you, because I am the Lord that he left thee. The Lord is saying, If only from now on you will obey me, I will be your personal physician. And I can assure you, if God decides to be your personal physician, since he doesn't want to waste time healing you, he will just make sure that you are healthy. I'm sure people have asked me before, if you remain healthy for the rest of your life, then are you going to die? You don't have to be sick to die. I've told you how I will go. If the Lord tarries, and I didn't go by the rapture, yeah, Daddy will tell me when the day is come, and I can assure you it's going to be a Sunday, because we will negotiate that one. And I will come to church like this. Maybe I will come to a Papa family. You never can tell. Have a beautiful time of worship, preach a good sermon, go home, eat pandadia, and go. So in the morning you are saying, hey, "Welcome, Daddy." In the evening they say, "He's gone home." That's the way that a, a child of God should go. How many of you want to go that way too? Let me hear you shout hallelujah. When your son rises, you do not have to go through darkness ever again. Your son does not need to set again. It's a matter of, am I ready from now on to obey? And when you read 2 Kings chapter 4, verse 1 to 7, that we've mentioned earlier on, 2 Kings 4, verse 1 to 7, you find that the one, the family that was destitute, that had no money, no food, nothing, by the time the Almighty God finished with them, they never lacked again. For the rest of the life of that family, they had abundance. Which means... If God decides to pay your debt today, and I know he will, when you restore your prosperity, you never need to borrow again. Yeah. But you see, when you study that story, you will know that the degree of prosperity will be determined by the degree of obedience. Because the man of God told the woman, go and borrow empty vessels and borrow them, not a few. As soon as the number of vessels that she borrowed were filled with oil, the oil stopped flowing. If that woman borrowed a hundred uh, empty vessels, she got a hundred vessels full of oil. If she had borrowed a thousand, she got a thousand. The degree of obedience. Because there are some of us who obey God in certain areas of our lives, and when it comes to other areas, <laughs> we try to use human wisdom. That's one thing that every one of us need to know and know and know. God is wiser than you. Can you say amen to that? Yeah. Ah, you better believe that. And God is always amused whenever he sees somebody who is trying to be clever. <laughs> when, you, when you think you can maneuver, you can, ah, me, I have, to, I have to take care of myself now and, you know, look after my future and uh, handle things this way, that way. God will just be smiling. Before you were born, is God. Long after you are gone, he will still be what? God. And believe me honestly, no matter how clever you are, all God needs to do is just wave his finger. And he will tie you up so badly with your wisdom that you will never know the way out. <laughs> there are a lot of professors who are walking around naked in the streets. Just a little twist. And the brain is no longer functioning. But they decided 
to go back to that very thing that caused their failure originally. Peter said to the brothers and said, Brethren, I go a fishing. After the Lord had called him and said, From now on, you will no longer be catching fish, but you will be catching men. He said, I go a fishing. And again, he caught nothing. The sun, after it has risen, never needs to set again. We never need to go back to futility. But the choice is ours. We need to know one thing. When God, out of his infinite mercy, brings our son up again, for that son never to set again, we need to fear the only one who controls the son. So when we are talking about the almighty God, we need to understand that he's the one who can tell the son to stand still and it will obey. I mean, you know the story in Joshua chapter 10. If you read from verse 12 to 14 there, Joshua 10, 12 to 14. I know many of us used to say, Joshua told the son to stand still, and the son obeyed him. The son doesn't obey any man. If you read that passage, he said, Joshua spoke to the Lord. He spoke to the one who controls the son. And said, Lord, I'm busy for you. This son seemed on the way to setting. And I've not finished my assignment. Will you please keep the sun where it is for the time being? And God hearkened. If you read it up to verse 14, there had never been a day like that when God hearkened to the voice of a man. It is God who controls the sun. He can tell the sun to stand still. And when you read Isaiah 38, verse 1 to 8, Isaiah 38, verse 1 to 8, this same God can even tell the sun to go backwards. Why? Because he's the one who made heaven and earth. He's the controller of everything he made. People have asked me again and again, how has it been possible for you to remain holy? I said, I tell you the truth. It's not just because I love my daddy. It's because I fear him. Oh, because as general overseer. <laughs> Uh, if I decide to do some things that are uh, not natural, I mean, that are not expected, which of the pastors is going to cane me? Which of them is going to come and say, uh, Daddy, what you did is wrong, so we suspend you for three months? <laughs> I will say, I suspend you for six months. And then, which of them follow me all over the world? Which of them watch? Whether I'm wanting when I'm present with them and I'm something different when I'm away from them. None of them. But there's somebody who is everywhere at all times. There's somebody you can't lock the door against. There's somebody who is there when your wife has traveled, when your husband is not at home. There is someone who is there all the time. And whether you like it or not, one of his name is the consuming fire. The Bible made it clear. The fear of the Lord is what? The beginning of wisdom. If only you will fear him, your son will never set again. I will give you one or two stories. I hope you are not in a hurry. Uh, because, you know, the last time I was here with you was in December. And at that time I was in a hurry. Today I decided I'm not going to be in a hurry. I'm going home. I'm going to be with my family. Is that okay by you? All right. So I, I just want to give you one or two stories to illustrate this point. Because from now on, I want the Almighty God to move all of us, you and I, from glory to glory. Do I hear you say amen to that? When he heals you today, you don't need to be sick again. Provided. Provided. You will fear him and obey him. You probably have heard the story of a man before. When they brought him to a Butemeta years ago, I've never seen that kind of sickness before. 
every part of his body was just straight like iron rods the hands stretched out like this no matter how hard you try could not be bent in fact the hands are down they cannot be lifted up they are down the legs they're just like that he just no matter how hard he tried he could not bend the knees that was the situation when they brought him in. We share the gospel with him. Give your life to Jesus, he will take over. I mean, you know, whenever somebody's in the problem, when you say give your life to Jesus, before you finish, he said, oh yes. He gave his life to Jesus. We said a simple prayer, the kind of prayers we are going to say today. And all of a sudden, this man was kneeling down, was lifting his hand, was shouting. That's why when I ask people to shout or clap, and they don't do it very well, I say, you don't know what, you don't know what God has done for you. There are people who want to clap, they can't move their hands. Is there anybody here who wants to give the Lord a big hand for example? <laughs> Thank you, Father. Glory be to God. Thank you, Jesus. Amen. Thank you. So the Lord, the Lord healed him. <laughs> Thank you very much. And then, of course, he came to church, you know, two, three Sundays. And after some time, we didn't see him again. So we decided to do a follow-up. And we got to his house, sir. And we didn't see you in church. We hope nothing. Ah, he said, what do you mean? When somebody goes to the hospital and he's wet, won't he come back home? Is it your church that healed me? We said, no, sir. It's God. But we were, yeah. I've come to your church. They told me that God is healing people there. I went there. He healed me. Thank you very much. <laughs> at that time I was still a lecturer at the University of Lagos one day I was driving out of the gate and I saw this same man oh my the case now was worse than before the mouth now was wide open saliva was dripping the hands were on again and it was moving like that when I saw things like that, that's one of the reasons why I fear God. I love my daddy. My daddy loves me. However, <laughs> I know that just one finger of his can do quite a lot of damage. And then there was the story of another man. He used to be very wealthy. But he loved to drink once in a while. So he... He lost everything. And then he came. We spoke about giving life, his life to Jesus. He surrendered his life. And uh, we said, God will now open a door. A couple of days later, he came back and he said, yes, he, he had an idea. He wanted to go into fishing. I said, beautiful. That's a good job for a child of God because Jesus controls the fishes of all kinds. So he bought two boats and started. And God just kept on blessing him. I mean, wherever he turned, fish were jumping into his boats. And I'm talking of fish, some of them taller than I. In fact, there was a time, I remember one particular year, every fish we used at the convention is supplied free. He now had several boats and people were just begging to work for him. But then after some time, I just asked casually, how is brother so-and-so? They said, we've not seen him for some time. So I sent for him. And I said, bro, I, I heard that uh, you've been very busy, you know. Oh, he said, yeah, yeah. And while he was talking, I smelled alcohol. Bro, you know, in those days we were all bro and sis, you know. <laughs> bro, you, 
what is this I'm smelling? Oh, well, you know, uh, fish, you know. Fish can smell and, uh, you know, just to get rid of that special smell of the fish. You know, nothing more, just, you know, a little glass of whiskey and, ah. I said, sir, but I warned you that <laughs> you're in a business that is totally controlled by Jesus. When it comes to fishing, he's the total controller. I mean, you know the story very well. Oh, that's all right. Uh, you know, I'm okay with Jesus. Uh, don't, don't, don't be legalistic about it. So I said, yes, sir. In one day, six of his boats capsized. It took the special mercy of God that, I mean, the boat capsized right in the deep ocean. It took the special grace of God to rescue the men. As soon as the men got on land, they said, uh-uh, bye-bye. When your sun rises, it does not need to set again, provided you will fear him and obey him. Let me tell you just one more story. I was a young man. Some of you probably have heard this story before. I call his name Sam, Brother Sam. He was an illiterate. But oh my God, that brother was anointed. I mean, <laughs> he had supernatural powers. If he's praying for you and you have stomach pain, he will describe to you how the pain is traveling down your intestine. And when he gets to where you can just go to the toilet and get rid of it, he will say, now go to the toilet. And by the time you return, all is well. I think he raised about four or five people from the dead. That's how powerful he was. In fact, there was one occasion when he was invited to come and preach in a college and he couldn't speak English. So he said, well, I will go. When I get there, I will ask them to get me an interpreter. As he got there now, and he opened his mouth to say, I can't speak English, so get an interpreter. Fluent English just began to flow. And he spoke beautiful English for about one hour, and he didn't know what he was saying. He just saw that people were rushing forward to, by the time he was giving an altar call in English. But then, success came, you know. People were everywhere, Brother Sam, Brother Sam. So... Whenever they say, Brother Sam, let's go for Bible study, he will say, Who's going to preach? Ah, it is uh, the area pastor, so and so. He said, hey, How many dead has he raised? You know, tell me, give me his credentials before I could go and sit down under his teaching. Brother Sam ended up in a lunatic asylum. Unfortunately, he's dead now. I believe that your son shall rise again. I also believe that once that son is risen, if you will cooperate with the Almighty God, that son will never set again. And of course, if your son is Shiny right now. Glory be to God. Now you know what to do so that that sun will never, never set. I believe God has sent me here today to do just a little bit of ministration in his name. And I will do that. I am confident that those of us who have been trusting God for one miracle or the other, today will be our day. But before we move on to that, may I appeal to those of us who are here who are not born again. You see, when God wants to perform miracles, he has a way of separating between those who are his and those who are not his. The word of God made it clear. He said the rain can fall on one part of a city and leave the other side of the city dry. That's Amos chapter 4 verse 7. The word of God made it clear that the almighty God can make sure that there is blessing in Goshen and there are problems in Egypt. It's there in the word of God. 
in order that the showers of blessing that God wants to send down on us today will not leave you untouched. If you are here and you are not here born again, don't let your pride hinder you. This is a day that I know we will never, never forget. Shall we bow our heads, please, in prayer? If there's anyone here who will say, yes, sir, please pray for me. Pastor, I want to surrender my life to Jesus. I don't want to resist God any longer. I want to become a child of God completely. If there's anyone like that here, now that all heads are bowed and all eyes are closed, will you raise your hand very quickly so I can pray for you? God bless you. God bless you. Okay, I can see. Please keep the hands up for a while. I'm going to pray for you in a moment. You know the areas in which your son has set. Whether it is health-wise, finance-wise, marriage-wise, joy-wise, talk to the Almighty God and say, Father, before I walk out of here, let my son rise again. Let's begin to talk to the Lord. You can sit down if you want to. Let's just begin to talk to the Almighty God and say, Father, in this area in my life, let the sun rise again. Let the sun rise again. I'm sorry for all that I've done. I'm sorry for having abused my body. I'm sorry, Lord God Almighty, that when I was rich, I did not serve you the way I ought to with my money. I'm sorry, Lord God Almighty, that I did not listen to your voice before I got married. And so I got into this problem. But Lord, let my son rise again. In this area of my life, let the sun rise again. Today, let the sun rise again. Oh yes, everything that the devil has stolen from me, Lord God Almighty, I want, I want them restored. Yes, Lord, have mercy on me. Let, let my son rise again. Let my son rise again. And if your sun is shining, then pray, Lord, don't let my son ever set. Oh, don't let me ever do anything that will cause my son to set. My Lord and my Savior, as the sun is rising, let it just rise and stay rising. From today, just take me from glory to glory. I want to be absolutely healthy from now. Never seek again. I want to be absolutely prosperous from today. Never again into debt. Never again. I want to be free today. Never again into captivity. Never again into bondage. Father, I want my joy to be full today. Never again to go into sorrow. Never again to go into sorrow. Oh yes, Lord, I want the harmony in my home restored today. Never again to face a crisis in my marriage. Oh yes, Lord, I want you to take over my business today so that you will be the only one controlling so that the sun will just keep on rising, rising and rising, ever rising. No more crisis in my business, oh Lord. Oh yes, Lord, let the sun rise today. Never again to set. Health-wise, never again to set. Finance-wise, never again to set. Emotionally, never again to set. Yes, Lord, I want to be free today. Free in body, free in soul, free in spirit. Free all the time. Oh yes, Lord. Let my son rise today. Never again to set. Never again to set. 
Glory be to your holy name, Lord. In Jesus' mighty name, we have prayed. Amen. Father, we just want to thank you. We want to thank you because your children have prayed. And I know you have already heard their prayers. And Lord, I am going to pray for them now. In your name. I'm going to pray for them as your representative. And as I take them group by group, step by step, Father, I pray that every one of my requests today will be granted in Jesus' name. Amen. I've already prophesied to your children that they will leave this place rejoicing today. Amen. Father, so let it be in Jesus' name. Amen. Thank you, my daddy. Glory be to your holy name. For we pray in Jesus' mighty name. Amen. Praise the Lord. All right, God bless you. You may be seated. We're going to take it one group after the other. The first group we are going to pray for now are those who want to live here without any single ailment left in their bodies. In other words, if you have any form of sickness or disease, it doesn't matter the name, the doctors may call it. I'm going to pray for you now. Uh, I will appreciate it. Those of you who have a seat, you, if you could sit down now. Want healings for your body. I want you to stand now. You're going to do something. You see, the Bible says, this sign shall follow them that believe. They shall lay hands on the sick and they shall recover. And I got a new insight into that passage some years ago during my first visit to Zambia. I ate their food. I wanted to be a missionary. So I ate their food. And that night I went to the toilet. I can't remember now whether 18 or 28 times. I think at the last time, I remember that the Bible said, you shall lay hands on the sick, and they shall recover. And it didn't say who the sick is, just the sick. And that time I was sick. So I lay hands on my stomach. I said, stomach, hear the word of the Lord. If I eat any dangerous thing, it shall not harm me. So stop troubling. And the stooling stopped. You're going to lay your own hand on your own head right now or on any spot that is bothering you. And I'm going to command the anointing of the Almighty God to go from here to your hand, through your hand, into your system. So that by the time we finish praying, in the mighty name of Jesus, you will know that the sun is rising again. In the name of Jesus. Father, because you are the word from the beginning. And the Bible tells me, Lord God Almighty, that you made all things, including all these, your children. You made them all. So if there's anything wrong with any part of their system, not only can you repair, you can replace. So Father, today, whatever you have to do, to make this your children absolutely whole. Do it now in Jesus' name. Amen. I hereby decree, Father, that every form of sickness, every form of disease in the system of these your children, I decree that they be rooted out now in Jesus' name. Amen. Father, it is written in your word that every plant my father did not plant shall be rooted up. Everything that was not in these bodies when these your children were born, I decree that they be rooted out now in Jesus' name. Amen. And Father, even if there's any sickness or disease that was in them when they were born, Father, I ask today that you reverse the irreversible in Jesus' name. Amen. I decree, Lord God Almighty, that even before we shout the next hallelujah, everybody here will be made whole physically in Jesus' name. Amen. And I pray that the new health that you are giving them will last forever in Jesus' name. Amen. Thank you, my Father. 
Glory be to your holy name. For we have prayed in Jesus' mighty name. Amen. Now let somebody shout hallelujah. God bless you. You may be seated. Now if you need the sun to rise in your finances. Yeah, glory be to God. Yeah, that's all right. You can just lay her down gently. Whatever is in her that shouldn't be there is going out now. Thank you, Father. Lay her down. Lay her down. If you have to move some chairs, do so. Thank you. Thank you. I was saying, if you need the sun to rise in your finances, you stand now and we're going to pray. Thank you, Father. This time, you will stretch your hands to heaven, ready to receive a special anointing for making wealth. And I'm sure that deep within you, you must have decided that from now on, whatever God gives you, he will have priority in the spending. Daddy, I want to thank you. Because you are Jehovah Jireh, the great provider. I thank you because you can make the mouth of a fish a bank. <laughs> I thank you because you can bring water out of the rock. I thank you because you can tell the rest it to pass so that there be a way where there was no way before. I bless your holy name because I know that you can rain down manna from heaven. Ah, what can you not do? When it comes to provision, my father and my God, you are number one. And so on behalf of this, your children, your children. Father, accept our thanks in Jesus' name. Amen. Lord, I pray that very soon these hands that are stretched out to you will become so anointed that whatever they touch will prosper in Jesus' name. Amen. Lord, I pray that every debt that these your children are owing will be paid this month in Jesus' name. Amen. I don't know how you are going to do it, but I don't need to know. I know you are the all-sufficient one. I pray, Lord, that the son, financially, concerning this, your children, will rise today in Jesus' name. In fact, I pray, Lord God Almighty, that in this week they are about to enter into, you will begin to surprise them in Jesus' name. Lord, I pray, Lord God Almighty, that these, your children, very, very soon, will be able to say to me, Daddy, any amount you need for the work of God, just mention it. Amen. So let it be in Jesus' name. Amen. Father, I pray that when you have prospered them beyond measure, because your word says that the blessings of the Lord make earth rich and are there no sorrow with it, I pray that no sorrow at all will be added to their blessing in Jesus' name. Amen. Thank you, my Father. Glory be to your holy name. In Jesus' mighty name, we have prayed. Amen. Let's give the Lord a big hand for that. Thank you, Jesus. Hallelujah, Father. Amen. God bless you. You may be seated. Now, the last group that I'm going to minister to is a very comprehensive group. It is those who want the sun to rise in the area of fruitfulness. In sufficient progress in their place of work, they are not being promoted when they ought to. We are talking about students who are not passing the examinations at the appointed time. We are talking of those who are looking for a job and can't get one who have all the qualifications and they are just wasting away. We're talking of all kinds of miracles that could make ones joyful. 
So if you need your son to rise in the area of fruitfulness, will you please rise? And this is the last group now. Thank you, Father. And this time around, you're going to point your hands towards me. Because I am going to receive from my daddy and transmit it to you right now. So that from now on, you'll be as fruitful as ever. Amen. Father, I thank you. I thank you because all these your children that are standing and pointing towards us, they are doing so because they recognize us as your representative to them. I thank you because I know you always hear me. And I know you have never disappointed me before. I know you are not going to disappoint me today. So, Father, accept our thanks in Jesus' name. Amen. Now, Father, I am asking for these, your children, to be specially anointed for fruitfulness. Amen. I want the pastors among them, within a month, to begin to say, we have no more room for converts in Jesus' name. Amen. I want those who are yet to be married among them, to begin to send me letters of invitation to their wedding in Jesus' name. Amen. I want those who are trusting you for the fruit of the womb to begin to send me letters saying the baby is due in the next one month. Amen. Father, let it be so in Jesus' name. Amen. I want those of them who are trusting you for promotions to begin to get them by doubles in Jesus' name. Amen. My Father, my God, those who are trusting you for jobs, I'm asking that you give them a good problem. Amen. That they will have three invitations. Amen. And they will be saying, which one are we going to accept? Amen. Father, let it be so in Jesus' name. Amen. Now, Father, I'm asking that those who are widows among them, that still want to be married, this very year, you will solve their problems in Jesus' name. Lord God Almighty, every student here, I pray, Lord God Almighty, that from today, in a way that will surprise their lecturers, they will jump to the top of the class in Jesus' name. Amen. Every child here, Lord God Almighty, I pray that you will grant them robust health so that their parents will never have cause to worry over them in Jesus' name. Every elderly person here, Lord God Almighty, I pray that as they grow older, they will become stronger. They will become healthier. So that even in retirement, they will spend their days in joy, serving you, praising you, interceding for we young ones in Jesus' name. And Father, if there's anyone that I've left out, I know you have not forgotten anyone. Whatever miracle anybody may need here, Lord God Almighty, Give to him or her in Jesus' name. Amen. Let our joy be full. Amen. Thank you because the sun is risen. Amen. Thank you because the sun will never set again. Amen. Thank you because we will obey you now. Amen. We will love you. We will fear you. We will worship you. We will adore you. We will glorify you. And you will promote us more and more. Thank you, Father. Glory be to your holy name. For we pray in Jesus' mighty name. Let somebody shout hallelujah. <clears throat>